our friends Minecraft, Steve and Alex are in big trouble. Now, me and my brother Milo must build them security houses to keep them alive. But what happens when the sun goes down and this cave full of angry zombies attacks? Yeah, I'm gonna build a security house for Alex because she's my friend! Okay, I'll totally make one for Steve. We've gotta do this quick, Milo, to protect them from the zombies. That's why I've got a pretty amazing plan. I am not building a regular security house. No way. That would be too easy for the zombies to guess. I am going to build a dummy decoy house, which the zombies will definitely try and attack. Little do they know, when they try to get close, they will be absolutely destroyed by my defenses. The real security house will actually be somewhere far away from the zombies, which is way safer than building it close to them. Yeah, that's really smart, but I like my idea better. Really, Milo? What's your your idea. I'm gonna build a really secure and really fancy house for Alex because she's my best friend and she loves that kind of stuff. Milo, I'm your best friend. You can't lie to me about that. Well, kind of, but ever since me and Alex have been hanging out and talking about Minecraft, me and you have not been as close. Hey, that's crazy. We talk about Minecraft all the time. Remember when I spawned a bunch of chickens inside of your furnace room? Yeah. Yeah, I would understand if that made you angry. It was a really good prank. I wish I could do stuff like that more often, but once we save our friends, Alex and Steve, I'm totally gonna prank you again. It's so much fun. Maybe I'll even prank you today, although I don't know if we can, Milo. I might not have time to prank you because I'll be so focused on saving Steve. Well, that's good because I don't wanna get pranked anyway. Yeah, that is very understandable. I don't think many people really want to get pranked. That is why, instead of pranking you, I'm just going to build this house. I need to make sure I place only the grass that is required. I think here is a good moment to stop. The reason I'm building up a hill like this is because this is not going to be a real hill. This is going to be a fake hill that is hollow on the inside. I'm going to put some extra special contraptions inside. They will absolutely destroy the zombie army. There's no way they stand a chance against this. The decoy house does need to look pretty secure though. That is why I am grabbing quartz, iron blocks, iron bars, and even iron doors. If we are getting iron doors though, we definitely need levers. You need them to activate the doors, otherwise they just won't work. We have to make a big iron block ring around this area. It needs to be taken very seriously, otherwise the zombies will be able to break through the weak blocks that I might have chosen. Iron is the perfect choice because it's way too strong for them to break through. Milo. Are you really sure wood is the best idea? Yeah, but I'm also using stone and dirt, obviously. Well, stone's pretty good, but dirt? Milo, dirt is not a strong building block at all. Zombies actually crawl out of the ground in graveyards. They love dirt. Well, mind your own business, Chip. Dirt is actually what Alex asked for. Why would Alex ask for dirt unless she's a total secure base noob herself? She is not a noob. How dare you say that? stressful situation and you cannot be saying mean things to my friend. Sorry Milo, I should not be saying mean things. You're totally right. Instead, I need to make sure that we are all prepared for this zombie attack. That's why I'm building up this quartz wall really, really tall. Smooth quartz is one of the strongest blocks against zombies. Zombies hate light, so by making the house as bright as possible, we really help give those zombies a bad time. Now, I am going to place some more iron blocks right on the top. We're going to make them wrap all all the way around this outer wall. It can even then go upwards block by block like a real roof would. This is going to be a very awesome secure house, Milo. Steve is going to love it, even though it's actually the fake one and the real one will be so much better. This is only the tiny version of what will really become the ultimate secure house. Well, I think your house looks weird and stinky now that I'm up close to it. Milo, it doesn't look stinky. Iron and quartz don't smell like anything. If anything, it'll smell like metal and rocks. Yeah, that's exactly what it smells like. How did you know? Oh, uh, Milo, you're crazy. Of course it smells like metal and rocks. That's what I'm building it out of. What does your base smell like? Oh, really scrumptious things like dirt and bird seeds and all of the good stuff. Dirt and bird seeds? That's not the good stuff. That sounds gross. I don't think even zombies like that. Well, exactly. That's my point. If they don't like it, they're not gonna come over here. 
That's pretty fair, Milo. Is that your real secure house? If so, then maybe it's a good thing that the zombies don't want to go to it. They should totally want to come to mine. The more zombies that go into my secure house right now, the better. Because this secure house will just destroy any zombies that go inside. Because me and Steve will not actually be staying inside this house, we can make it as dangerous as we like. And there's no worry about our safety. Well, I haven't even put the security things in my house yet. Oh, that's pretty fair, Milo. What sort of secure things are you planning on putting inside your house? Well, you're gonna have to come and see it, Chip, because I'm not giving you any of my secrets. Secrets, Milo? I don't need your secrets. Trust me, I'm a pretty good pro at building secure houses, and Steve is the oldest Minecraft player ever. He's the ultimate expert. He's been there since before the Ender Dragon was even added. He basically knows everything about Minecraft and everything about how to survive. Yes, yeah, Steve is ancient. I think he might be the oldest person in Minecraft ever. It's pretty crazy how old Steve is. I think Alex is a little bit newer, but she's still pretty old. I'm sure you could get some great advice from her. Chip, can I tell you something? Sure, Milo. What do you want to tell me? Well, I'm actually really scared of Steve because he kind of looks like Herobrine. What? Milo, Steve doesn't look like Herobrine. Although, I guess if you just change those blue eyes to white eyes, he would look totally like Herobrine. But you don't have to worry. Herobrine is just Steve's cousin. What? Steve's cousin? That means it runs in the family. Yeah, but Steve is totally fine. Steve uses his awesome pro abilities for good. That's why we're still alive today. What? Yeah, he's really, really kind, and that's why he's such a good friend to us, Milo. We can't let our friends down. That's why inside of this fake zombie house, I'm gonna make a little area. We need to use iron trap doors and doors. Even though it definitely should be easy to get inside, it should not be too easy. Then the zombies might get suspicious. No secure house would ever just let them walk right in. That would be way too easy. We need to at least pretend that there's some sort of defenses here. We also need to grab some polished blackstone. We are going to make a little decoy area inside of this house. The first part of that is to make the little decoy kitchen. I think over here is pretty good and we can even add a little nice iron bar window. This way we have a really good view of uh, your wonderful house, Milo, which looks really cool. I also think we need another iron bar window over here. This way we can have a really nice view of absolutely nothing. I think I actually prefer this view a little bit, but I don't mind your house that much, Milo. I'm sure it's great in its own way. Yeah. Really great in its own way, and I'm looking forward to showing you it. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see, but a little scared. Are you sure that house is gonna work to stop the zombies? It's really secure, Chip. Trust me, I'm really loving this a lot, and I think it might be the most secure thing I've ever built. Yeah, you better make sure that's true, Milo. Otherwise, it could be totally destroyed by the zombies. Tell me that's not the only house you're building, right? Yeah. Oh no, Milo, I'm really worried for you. This is just a decoy house. That's why I'm already building the kitchen. Normally, I would take a lot more time to prepare, but this house just needs to look like it's lived in. We need furnaces and chests so that the zombies think it is Steve's old house. Back in the olden days, Steve only used to have furnaces and chests inside his house. That's why they are his favorite blocks to this day. We need to use lots of them if the zombies are gonna believe that this is really Steve's house. Not to mention, we also need to put some crafting tables down. Steve is famous for always having way too many crafting tables everywhere. He's such a messy guy. He was also there when the first painting was added. That is why he really loves the Minecraft paintings. Let's make sure we place it on this wall and not on the other walls. Yep, this painting is great and let's just add one more over here. Steve's favorite painting is this one. Oh yeah, that looks great and a little creepy but I'm sure it's totally fine. Now, we also definitely need to add some torches. Back when Steve first played Minecraft, the only way to light up your world was torches, so we need to use lots of them. Otherwise, Steve will not feel at home. We also need to grab some farmland, just like that, and we also need some water buckets and some seeds. Steve absolutely loves farming. It is how he used to get all of his food, before he discovered that you could totally roast some steaks or make some cookies. We'll place the farmland over here, and we'll even add a water bucket. We'll need to make sure we block the water from going down with a block of iron right there. Now the water bucket will not flow everywhere and be really disrupted. 
disruptive. Let's grab these iron trapdoors. We'll put them above the plants so that they don't get totally trampled by mistake. Let's also add in some more chests above the plant farm area. This way Steve can harvest all of his amazing crops and keep them really safe. Over here, we will add an item frame above this chest. Inside, we can add a bunch of bones. This way you can make all the bone meal you'd like. I think all these things will definitely help convince the zombies that this is really Steve's house. Although I can't believe I almost forgot to add cake. That's his favorite food by far. I think Steve would love this house so much and hopefully the zombies would think the same thing. Little do they know this house is a total, total trap. Once they walk above this hill, they will be surrounded by the craziest TNT ever. We need to get it in a really big pile. Then we need to add some redstone as well as some more iron blocks. This is what we will use to tie all the redstone into a big lever. We can flip the lever when all the zombies are inside this house. This will mean that the zombies get totally destroyed. If we can get as many zombies as possible while they are inside this house, we can protect our friends Steve and Alex, but especially Steve, since Milo, you've totally got Alex taken care of, right? Yeah, of course. Alex is really safe over here in my house, and I'm just building my next security measure. What's your next security measure, Milo? You're gonna have to guess, Chip. Uh, is it a lava moat by any chance, Milo? Oh, what the? How did you know that? Well, you are digging a moat around your security house, and I know you love placing lava. It's the only right guess. Yeah, it is really right. I guess you know me too well. Yeah, I totally do, but we're gonna get to know Steve and Alex way better too after we save them from these zombies. We'll basically become best friends, but we won't be able to do that until I properly make the next part of my house. I'm going to need to grab some smooth quartz stairs just like this. They can go up the back here. We are going to need to make a giant staircase up into the sky. I think this is a pretty good height for the first part of the staircase, but it's also important to add a lever. Once we walk up these stairs, we will need to turn back and activate this block of iron. This iron block will be next to a crafting table, which can block the redstone circuitry going on underground. Chip, look, I'm doing my lava dance. Milo, what is a lava dance? It's just a dance I do when I'm putting lava everywhere. Milo, you're cooking yourself. What is this lava dance? You're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I'm just really awesome. What would Alex think of this lava dance? She's looking away. She's ashamed. What? She's not ashamed. She thinks I'm a cool guy. I don't know, Milo. There's nothing cool about boiling hot lava. There is everything cool. Did you know that lava makes rocks? Uh, yeah, Milo, I did know that lava makes rocks. That's actually something I planned on using to my advantage later, but I don't want to say what it is now. I do not want the zombies to overhear. Yeah, that's really smart, Chip. If they overhear your plan, they might plot against you. Exactly. That's why we can't tell anybody about this extra secure house I'm making. Okay, Milo? Yeah, I promise. Thanks, Milo. I knew I could count on you. I'm just writing it down in a little book so I remember for later. Okay, thanks, Milo. Just make sure you keep the book nice and secure. I don't want to find it placed anywhere where the zombies could find it, okay? One thing about me is I am good at doing secure stuff. Yeah, totally. Is that why we got run out of our last village when you put the sign inviting all the zombies inside? Well, yes! Milo, that's not secure. That's crazy. That's the worst decision you could have made. If you do something that silly with these zombies, we could be in serious trouble, and so could our friend Steve and Alex. Well, decisions can be complicated. We need to make sure that these iron bars are really, really secure. We cannot be falling off of these because we'll land right in the zombies. This is the final part of the decoy house. Once these stairs reach about this high, we'll totally start on the real secure house. Steve says that zombies have really bad eyesight, so they totally won't notice that this is a real secure house above the decoy one. They will just be so distracted and blinded that they will fall victim to my TNT. If they are blinded though, we have to make sure that it is not by the sun. The sun will go down soon, and that is always when the zombies will attack. When the sun goes down, this house might become a lot darker, which will mean the zombies have a real advantage. I think I know exactly what to do. The second piece of lighting ever added to Minecraft was the glowstone block. It was Steve's favorite for a while, until he really started using sea lanterns. They're now his favorite, but he still really enjoys glowstone. By adding a glowstone ring around this iron part of the decoy, house, we help make sure that it is really well lit up and that in the nighttime there will be absolutely 
no chance that the zombies can get the darkness they want. If these zombies want darkness, they're gonna have to go back to their own cave. They will not find it here in the super bright house I'm building. We can even get rid of some of these grass blocks on the side and push them slightly further down. This means that the zombies will just see more and more glowstone. Oh wow, that looks really good. I think we can even add some glowstone to the sides of this house here. Oh yeah, the zombies will totally be blinded by this. Next time, they're definitely gonna think twice before deciding to raid me and Steve's house. They'll be too scared to even think about it. I also definitely need to grab some signs as well as some different dye colors. This way we can send messages to the zombies, like stay out. They will really, really fear this message, especially if we make it glowing and red. Whoa, that looks really scary. On this message, we can also write, or else. We'll make this the same color too. Now the zombies know they need to stay out or else. We can also add another sign here that says I'm serious. So the zombies know we are not joking about those two other signs. If the zombies ignore these three signs that are very kindly warning them to stay out, then they deserve everything that happens to them with our TNT. I think this back door needs to be a little more hidden though. Maybe we can add levers on the roof just like this. Mm, we'll need to make sure the doors open properly though. All right, this looks pretty secure. Now to enter the house, you need to go through two sets of doors and up a giant staircase. Yeah, this is a great idea. I'm so excited for it. What about you, Milo? How is you and Alex's house going? It's amazing. I'm really proud of it so far. Are you ready to show it to me? Yeah, of course. You should come over. Okay, I totally will. I'm ready for the tour, Milo. How do we get inside this thing? Well, first, you have to follow the squiggly path that goes all the way through the lava. And I made it so you can't jump over because of the little cobweb. That's pretty cool, Milo. I'm also going to use this lava to totally throw away all my items. It makes for a really good trash can. Hey! Sorry, Milo, I can't get them back, but I won't throw anything else in. Although, I don't know about this, Milo. These cobwebs can be jumped over. What? No way. Don't criticize me, Chip. I'm not criticizing. I'm just trying to warn you. See, Milo? Um, you got stuck a little bit. Yeah, but I made it right over to the grass area, which is right outside your secure house. Well, whatever. What's inside is even crazier anyway. Really? What's inside the house, Milo? Well, here are the tricky doors to get in because... Zombies can't open both of these. Okay, that's pretty good, Milo. This will definitely slow the zombies down, but they can be pretty strong. They can even break through real doors. This won't stop them fully. Well, whatever. I'll think of that later. What I really want to show you is my amazing door traps. Oh, wow. These are pretty cool. Are you sure that they work, Milo? Yeah, look. You just walk in here and... Wait, Chip, I'm trapped. Let me out. Milo, oh no, don't break your house. I'll fix that for you. All right, I can help you out of this door trap. Just hold still. Please, Chip, please help me. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, Milo, and I'll even place the door back for you. That was a bit scary, but moving on, we're going to my upstairs section. This is a really good fenced off area where Alex and I can shoot bows and arrows. Yeah, this is pretty pretty okay, but Milo, you can't shoot bows and arrows if you don't have bows and arrows here. Well, I'm still working on it, okay? Leave me alone, buddy. Okay, are you gonna build something else up here? Because it's pretty empty. Well, obviously. I have a really, really good surprise of what I'm gonna build up here. Can you tell me what it is? Absolutely not, because it's really amazing and epic, and also it's Alex's idea, so you to have it. Milo, does that mean that you stole Alex's idea and now you don't want me stealing it again? No, we collaborated. Wow, that's a big word for you, Milo, but I have a big problem for you as well. What's the problem? The sun is going down. I just noticed and I think it's time to get back to building my main secure house. We don't have much time. When the sun sets, the zombies totally arrive. Well, now I'm feeling all nervous in my tummy. Quickly, Chip, we gotta yeah, you're right, Milo. We have to build so fast. I can already see the zombies over in their cave starting to get restless, Milo. They are not going to give us much time before they start attacking. I've been staring at them to make them angry. Milo, don't make them angry. You should not be trying to make them even angrier than they are. You need to be making them calm down. Well, I just want them to know that I'm mean and I'll punch. 
much, Sam. I guess that's good. Maybe if you can scare them, they won't want to attack you. But I don't know, Milo. Zombies have been around for millions of years, and they have never been scared away before. They can only be destroyed and defeated. When the sun goes down and they come over to my house, I will finally defeat them. Yeah, you totally will, Milo. I'm really confident in you. As long as you think of some more better defenses to add than just cobwebs and some dirt. Yeah. What's a final epic thing, Milo? That sounds really mysterious. It's none of your business. Okay, Milo, sorry. I won't ask again. I know it's a huge secret that you are keeping. If you say it too loudly, the zombies might overhear as well, which would definitely be bad for you and Alex. Precisely. Sorry, Milo. I got a little confused, but no one will be as confused as these zombies are going to be when they see my giant laser wall. What? Your giant laser wall? Yeah, of course. Are you saying you don't have a giant laser wall? No, of course I don't. That is way too complicated for a guy like me. Well, a guy like me can totally do it. Me and Steve are basically experts at lasers. Once I finish building these iron bars down to the ground on this side, I will actually make the laser wall. It's going to be really cool. Just trust me on this one, Milo. We'll need to grab some real lasers. Whoa, that looks so cool. We're not going to be able to do it without a colored lens. But I think using the usual red color is a little boring. We are way too cool for that. Instead, we are going to place these laser blocks four blocks apart. Part. And then instead of plain old red, we're going to need to turn these into blue. It is Steve's favorite color, and he will really, really like to have a real blue lens. Okay, this looks pretty good, but I think we can do a little better than that. This is perfect. Now, if we put this colored lens inside of all these lasers, whoa, that's so blue. It's really cool and a nice change from the regular laser colors. Let's add more of these all the way around. I think they definitely need to go just like this. Oh, wow. This is a very scary looking laser wall. We'll need to add a gap right over here that we can actually go through. It's to make sure that we can access this area. It's also to make sure that all the mobs we put behind this laser wall are nice and safe and sound because we are going to put some special defensive mobs inside here. We'll need to make sure we place a certain amount of them. If we get this count wrong, it could ruin the entire house. We'll be able to start spawning in these mobs once we place the final few laser blocks. The laser blocks will back up onto a big iron wall. This iron wall is very important. It will be a big part of what keeps me and Steve safe from this zombie army. Stage 2 of building this base defense is going so well. I'm really, really happy so far. What about you, Milo? How is your secure base going in round 2? It's doing really good, Chip. I'm very proud. I'm so happy to hear it's going well, Milo. Once we get these bases done, Steve and Alex will be really, really impressed with us. They will be so relieved that they actually had friends that could help them survive the zombie attack. Yeah, and who better to ask than Milo and Chip? Exactly. We will always protect our friends, especially when there are zombies involved. And somehow, there always are. That's why we're doing so much work to make sure that these secure houses are the best they can possibly be. And that includes putting some iron bars on this side of the staircase as well. This will help make sure that no zombies can slip through the gaps. If they could, we would put Steve and Alex in serious danger, Milo, and we would never do that to our friends. Instead, we would put our friends in such safe protection, there is no chance they'll ever get in danger from anything like zombies. And part of that protection means spawning in iron golems, an entire army of them even. This is what it will take to protect Steve and Alex from the evil zombie attack. If me and Steve's base can have iron golems in it, then it will stand a really good chance against these zombies. We just need to grab some pumpkins, like these ones. If we use these carved pumpkins right here, like this, whoa, we have an iron golem army just like that. Perfect. We will also need to add in some fence gates. I think we can add some blue ones. These really are Steve's favorite color. He loves blue. The iron golems are not hurt by the lasers. They are made out of metal, so it goes right through them. But one mob that definitely will be hurt by the lasers is the zombies. That I guarantee. This next structure is going to be very, very interesting. It's going to look like one of Steve's favorite items in all of Minecraft. It's a pretty cool block. It is a giant ore that you can only find underground, except this ore will be hollow and have some crazy traps inside of it. Normally the ore has a very specific color and it is one of the most rare ores in all of Minecraft. I'm so excited that I actually get to build 
build it right here. Steve is gonna love having it inside his base. The color of this ore is very similar to the color of Steve's shirt. That is because both his shirt and the ore are blue. This ore is diamond, the most powerful ore in the entire overworld. We're going to build a massive hallway with traps inside, and the outside is going to look just like a diamond ore block. Let's get a diamond ore block so that we can see what it properly looks like. Okay, it definitely has a very specific pattern here. We need to make sure we add some diamond ore shapes on the bottom right, and this is pretty good. Okay, it's looking not bad so far. Now, we need to make sure we match all the shapes correctly. On this side, there's a shape that looks a little bit like this. Yeah, this is looking really good. Now, we also definitely need to add some more up there. There's definitely a shape right over here. I think it looks a little bit like this. Let's make sure we stick to the color palette and don't mess up any of this at all. Now, we need to add another blue shape over here, just like this, and we can also add another one right on top here. Oh, this is so cool. I really like this diamond ore so far, but there's still more we can do with it. We need to make sure we add some snow blocks. Normally diamond ores do not have snow inside, but this diamond ore needs to look very shiny. Whoa, that already looks so much better. Let's add some snow to this side too, and whoa, this is looking pretty good now. We just need to add a couple more little parts of diamond, and oh yeah, this is almost perfect. We can add some clay around to transition between the blue of the diamonds and the nice gray of the stone. All right, once we add in this, it should be totally ready to transform into a hallway. I'm so excited to see this complete. Steve is really going to love this. He's totally gonna love this whole security house, but this just might be his favorite part. It's almost my favorite part, and if you fly pretty far away, it really does start to look like diamond ore. Oh wow, that is magical. Let's extend this entire hallway far back, but we won't be using just diamond ore. We are going to be using diamond blocks. Diamonds are very, very strong. There is not much in the world that can break them. That is why it is really important that we use them for this hallway. This hallway will lead up to the entrance to the next level, so if it is too weak, then the zombies will be able to break upstairs and get to where me and Steve will be hiding. If the zombies reach us, then uh oh, we might not stand as good of a chance as I thought. We need to make sure this hallway gets a little smaller towards the middle as well. That's why I'm building the diamond blocks out just like this. We also need to make sure they extend all the way up into the ceiling in this way, otherwise a zombie could get knocked by another zombie and jump right over through the hole. We're not gonna let that happen, but we can only make sure it doesn't by building every single place super secure. This hallway will still be made out of diamonds, but it will go pretty far back. Once the hallway ends, you will enter a big staircase that will lead you up to level two. If you're me or Steve, you're gonna be totally safe going up that staircase, but if you were a zombie, you are not going to be able to survive. The staircase will have super but amazing defenses on it, designed to stop zombies in their tracks. I think once we place these final four diamond blocks along this hallway, we can call it complete. Along this hallway, we just need to place these final four diamond blocks and boom, the shape of the hallway is now complete. We do need to turn the floor into some clay blocks. Normally we would not be using clay here, but this is a pretty interesting build. Steve's colors are blue and light blue, and they work really well with gray and clay. Ha, that even rhymes. Oh yeah, we are really getting in the zone now. If we add some more clay blocks here, then we'll have a really good floor. We've just got to make sure we don't leave any underground bits like that. Otherwise, the zombies could spawn and it would put Steve in real danger. This is good so far, but we definitely need to add in some real traps. That is why I am going to grab some tripwire hooks and some string as well. By placing these together, we can actually form a big trap. We shouldn't place too many though. If we place a bunch of them, then we could seriously overload this hallway and it won't work as well because they need time to untrigger before snapping back down again, just like this. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. And another good part of it is the iron golems are too tall. They cannot make it through. We will need to include some dispensers on the sides of these tripwire hooks though. We can even add some above. By adding in these dispensers, we can totally make sure that any zombie walks through here gets pummeled by arrows. They are not gonna like that, but me and Steve certainly will. We're gonna really enjoy seeing the zombies get a taste of their own 
and evil medicine. I think we'll place some iron blocks to show that the hallway ends, but we need to grab some arrows. Instead of using regular arrows, we're going to use arrows of regeneration. Normally, if these arrows hit a mob, they will heal it, causing the mob to become stronger. But zombies actually take reverse effects from regeneration. Using regeneration on a zombie will do damage to it. It's basically like giving a zombie poison. That is why using these arrows in our dispensers will really help us. Not only will it hurt the zombies, but it will also heal us in case we accidentally step on any of our own traps. That is a very important step in making sure Steve is as safe as possible. Okay, all of these dispensers have the regeneration arrows inside of them, but I think we need to check on somebody who might not have as many regeneration arrows. And that is definitely Milo. How is your secure base coming along, Milo? It's really good. I just built a golem. A golem? One golem? That's not going to be enough to protect you against the zombies, Milo. What? Yes, it is. And he's really cool. Wait, where's the iron golem? I don't see him anywhere. I didn't say iron golem. It's a snow. Milo, this is the slowest snow golem I've ever seen, and why would you build a snow golem? That's not gonna help. Well, because Alex told me to, and because this snow golem is my new best friend. Your new best friend? I thought Alex was your new best friend. Well, they're both my best friends. Milo, you keep changing all your friends. It's gonna end pretty badly for you. You better hope they don't get mad at you and leave. They won't get mad at me. This guy is called Mr. Fat, and he's awesome. Mr. Fat? Oh, I guess that makes sense. Milo, I really am worried about you. I think one fact is that your house is not as secure as you think it is. You're going to need to do a lot more if you want to survive the zombie attack like I am. Well, Mr. Fax said that your place looks dumb. Hey, he can't even see my place from there. He's basically behind a big orange wall. What? No, that's a window. I guess, but it's not a very easy to see through window, Milo. It's really, really crowded. And isn't there cobwebs in front of it? Well, I don't want the zombies seeing in, do I? I guess not, but it just means you will not be able to see out very well. I don't think Alex will like living in a house that she can't even see out of. Aw, well, maybe you have a good point. All right, I'll change the color of the stinking windows. Although, I do like orange. It's my favorite color after all, and it matches very well with the lava. Milo, have you noticed I am building my entire base blue? It's Steve's favorite color because it's his shirt, but I know it is your favorite color as well. Yeah, well, I do actually like your base because it's blue, and I think that's really good. Thanks, Milo. I'm glad we agree. One other thing that is blue, though, is the zombie shirts as well. Steve hates zombies because they remind him of himself. If Steve becomes a zombie, he will look exactly like them. We cannot let that happen, Milo. It will be the same for Alex, except she might look like a zombie villager with her green shirt. I don't know, though. We need to be careful we don't see them turn into zombies. Well, I don't want to see them turn into zombies, which is why my place is really awesome. Uh, I don't know about that, Milo. Well, I don't want them to turn into zombies, which is why I'm working really hard on me and Alex's secret project. You guys keep talking about your secret project, but I still don't know what it is. It's really eating me up inside. I totally want to know. You're not going to know about it, loser. Hey, I'm not a loser. I'm a cool guy. I don't lose at things, especially not secure base building challenges. Well, I guess we're going to find out who's going to really survive. It could be both of us, Milo. Alex and Steve are a really good pair of friends, just like we're a really good pair of friends and brothers as well, Milo. Yeah. Brothers, I guess. Exactly. That's why we need to survive together. You can't just let Alex and yourself totally die to the zombies. I would be so sad about it. Well, that's okay. I guess Steve could come over here and hide as well. I don't know, Milo. My side is pretty secure. Steve will not need to leave this area, especially not now that I'm building a giant red light green light section. It's going to have a huge turret wall. It also will be a very open area so that anything shot out by the turrets won't just go landing in the wall. Instead, it will go flying out into the night and might even hit a stray zombie, dealing even more damage and keeping us even more safe. That's just one of the ways I'm making sure me and Steve are safe from these zombies.
zombies. I really think you need to work on more ways to keep you and Alex safe. Otherwise, it'll just be me and Steve left, and I really don't want that. I think the best part of surviving is being able to survive together and have awesome adventures, like raiding a mineshaft or a woodland mansion, or even conquering the Ender Dragon. Steve is an expert at that. He was actually the first person to ever take down the Ender Dragon. He discovered the Elytra and became the best master at flying that there ever was. That's why we can't afford to lose him to these zombies, Milo. Even a master like him can't take them on by his own. He needs a secure house with his friends to help stop them. That's what I'm talking about! Exactly, and once we're done, what me and Steve will be talking about is how easily we survived the zombies thanks to the secure house. This red light, green light area is going to be pretty difficult, especially because in order to go through a red light, green light, you need to wait for the green light. And because me and Steve are in charge of building this and making sure it is really hard for the zombies to go through, we're actually not adding any green lights. They will only be red. That means that if a zombie dares to move even one inch, they will get easily blasted by the turrets, and it won't be against the rules of the red light, green light game at all. I think that's a pretty genius plan. I just need to make sure we do it smartly by adding a big section to climb up in the middle here. By using iron blocks, we can also add ladders on top of them. Oh yeah, this is going to look so cool. For our turrets, we will need to use sentry blocks. They blend really well in with this iron. By using a skeleton, we will not alert the zombie army to come out early. It's a very good plan, and I hope it'll keep us safe. Hopefully they should work, and whoa, they totally do. Look at all these turrets raising out of their iron block shells. Wow, that skeleton is really being hurt. It totally died from the turrets. This is perfect. We should also make sure we place one last slab around the edge here though. Otherwise, when the zombies come, they will be able to jump over the edge, and that is not what we want at all. This house is looking pretty good, but we definitely need more. These turrets aren't gonna be enough to stop these zombies by themselves. That's why on the roof here, we are going to need to build a giant dog room. Inside of this room, we will have an army of wolves ready to attack any zombies that try and get past. Steve was actually the first person to ever tame a wolf. He still has it, and that's why they have such a good bond. By making sure we have wolves as well, we have all the advantage of a doggy army. Zombies and wolves are sworn enemies, which is perfect because Steve and wolves are sworn friends. They really do go way back, and that's why we are going to put so many of them way up in this secure base. We need to give them a nice room though that makes them feel really safe inside, and I have a very good plan about how we do that. There is a certain player that these dogs have totally bonded to the most, and this time it is not me. It will actually be Steve. We'll need to make sure we do his hair correctly, otherwise the dogs will not recognize him and will not be as calm as they would. Okay, if we build this really, really accurately, then according to my theory, the dogs should already be calm and relaxed. Okay, this is already starting to look like Steve. We will need to grab some pink terracotta though, just to build Steve's mouth like this. Okay, looking pretty good. Now let's grab some brown stained concrete like this to make Steve's nose. Oh no, his nose accidentally fell into his mouth. That could have been a little bit embarrassing. Let's also make sure we make Steve's eyes. We need to make them nice and big so that they fit really well into his face. Okay, this is pretty good. We've left some nice room for his eyes and we're placing even more blocks going up like this. We will also need to place an extra block of iron going all the way around like this. It is very important that we totally do this right, otherwise we will really upset Steve and uh oh, we just made Steve bald. We need to place some extra blocks of brown terracotta here so that Steve is not bald. Okay, that's a relief. That could have gone really badly for Steve. Now let's add in some more blocks. We'll need to add snow here and we are not making Herobrine. That is why instead of snow in the middle eyes, we are going to need to place down some blue concrete. Whoa, that looks just just like Steve. This is way better than I ever thought it could be. Let's break a couple of these extra iron blocks. We'll need all the space we can get to survive this zombie army, and I don't want to waste any of it on unnecessary things. Now, on the inside of this dog area, we'll need to place some diamond blocks just around the area that we've built the Steve head in. Oh yeah, just like this. This is perfect. Let's also make sure the diamond wall extends all the way up and out this way. We're using diamonds inside of 
have this secure base rather than iron like we used in the first one because diamonds are way more secure. Iron's pretty cool, but diamonds are really the best choice here. It's also Steve's favorite. Steve does like iron, of course, but diamonds will always have a special place in his heart and, of course, in his chests. Steve has some of the most diamonds out of any player in all of Minecraft. He is the oldest player after all, so he's had the most time to collect the diamonds out of anybody. Let's place the diamonds up the wall just like this and oh yeah all we need to do is raise this wall and fill it with dogs and we will have completed the dog room this will be the area where me and steve can hang out and make sure we remain safe we will also need to make a roof area where we can see out into all the oncoming zombies otherwise we'll be blind waiting for the zombies to reach us before we can do anything about stopping them we won't just be relying on our secure defenses no way that's the coward's way out we are not cowards steve is one of the bravest players ever he discovered creepers, which are some of the scariest mobs in all of Minecraft, so Steve is no coward. Instead, we are going to grab some amazing OP items and go right into the battle against the zombies ourselves. I really hope that by jumping in there and taking the zombies head on, we can really do lots to protect everybody from them, including Milo and Alex, who definitely need some extra protection, especially after seeing Milo's secure base, which isn't really secure and honestly not much of a base. I'm pretty worried about it, but as long as me and Steve have a really secure base and lots of overpowered armor, we should be able to protect Milo and Alex to the best of our ability. Now, we need to add some smooth quartz up on the ceiling like this. We can place it so quickly. We are quickly running out of time before the zombies attack at sundown. The sun really is setting. This is terrible. The zombies know that when the sun sets, they no longer take any damage. This means that they will totally start roaming and marching towards us. The zombies have a very bad eyesight, but a very good sense of smell. That means that even though they can't see us very well, they will be able to smell us, and they can even smell our fear. Uh-oh, these iron golems have totally escaped. Before I build the final defenses inside of the top rooms, we'll need to spawn a couple more iron golems, just like this. Oh no, the iron golem was taking damage inside the iron blocks. Talk about friendly fire. Luckily, these iron golems should stay pretty safe until the zombies come out, that is. That's why we need to make sure we can also help the iron golems. Let's raise this iron pillar all the way up to the roof. That way at nighttime we can climb up these ladders on the side of it and get all of our OP weapons and start attacking these zombies from a very far range. Let's also start spawning in the wolves. We'll need to grab some bones to actually tame these wolves. Let's place some in the corner. Oh yeah, there can definitely be one and we'll add a bunch on every single block over here. Their colors are actually the color red, which is pretty cool, but I do not think it matches this Steve house. No way! This Steve house is very blue, so we need to make sure we dye all of these dogs' colors a nice blue color. Steve's favorite colors of blue are dark blue and light blue, which is the same favorite color that Milo has. That is why we can add one dark blue color and one light blue color in a nice pattern. Hang on a second. This dog seems a little weird. There's something else. Wait a minute. This dog has a puppy. Let's tame the puppy using these bones and set it down there. Oh, that is so sweet. Let's make sure we totally include this puppy in our dyeing collar process. We can add all these different colors of blue to these dogs. Wow, there are so many and it looks really nice having all the colors of them. Finally, there are the perfect amount of colors to dye these three dogs the same colors. Whoa, this is awesome. I really like this a lot, actually. Hmm, now that we've added these dogs, we really need to get going on making some armor stands. We'll need some armor, but Steve does not like the new nether right armor. Oh no, he prefers the armor that was around back when he first started, which is the good old classic diamond armor. We'll need to make sure we put the diamond armor on all of these armor stands. Whoa, the diamond armor looks really cool next to all of these diamond blocks. It's such a good fit. Just like this armor is going to fit so well onto me and onto Steve. Let's also make sure we add some item frames with some diamond swords. Let's also make sure we add some item frames with some diamond swords, as well as diamond axes and diamond pickaxes. You can never be too careful. We can add three glowing item frames for every single piece of diamond armor that we provide. We'll put swords at the top because they are very sharp and I don't want any of these dogs going to get them and hurting themselves. We will then put axes and finally on the very bottom we can add these diamond pickaxes. Oh wow, this diamond armor wall looks so good but it is definitely not complete. We'll need to grab some quartz slabs so that we can make the next stage of this wall. It is not only diamond armor and diamond tools that Steve likes fighting with, 
No way. Steve also loves fighting with bows. That is why we need to put chests above every single armor stand and fill them with arrows. We'll also need to grab a bow for every single chest. Oh wow, look at that. Let's grab our arrows of regeneration, which deal really high amounts of damage to zombies, and fill every single chest with them. We will need to leave a gap in the middle of the chest though. That is because we will put a bow right in the middle of it. We need to make sure we fill every single one of these chests with the right items. Look, by adding in these chests just like this, we can fill them so much quicker. Wow, we already filled them with all of the bows and arrows. There's still more we have to do though. We've got to provide some emergency food supplies over here. There is nothing in these chests, but if I grab some golden apples and enchanted golden apples, we can add them all the way through. We also will definitely need to add in some cake. Now that we've put cake and golden apples inside these chests, we need to use the same trick to put them in this top one. Oh yeah, would you look at that? This is a perfect amount of supplies. I really, really like this area. It's looking pretty secure, but I still think there's more we need to do. Up on this very top area, we will need to provide a big iron block railing all the way around. We can't use actual wall or actual rail blocks. Those are way too tall, and we need to be able to aim our bows over the top of this thing. That gives us the best chance of shooting down these zombies. Okay, this is looking pretty good, but there is one last thing we need to build. Down here, we will need to add a big section full of TNT just like this. Across every single side of this secure base, we will add TNT around the very edges. By using TNT just like this, we help make sure that even if the zombies do manage to totally overrun this secure base, we can activate the TNT to destroy them all, just like we're going to do for the decoy house. Let's make sure we place the TNT very safely on both sides. If we use even a little bit too much TNT, we could be in some serious danger. TNT is a very destructive block, so I do not want to go overboard. Overboard is a very bad way to go with TNT. But now that we have added in all this TNT, we just need to make sure we wrap it around the front here. This way we can activate it using any lever that we place on this front wall. I think we can grab some levers right now. We can use one over here next to this TNT and one over here next to this one. Hopefully once we activate them, we can quickly run upstairs, although I do not know if that will work. That is why we are going to place two final pillars of TNT up on these sides. It's got to go all the way up to the very top. I also need to destroy these pillars. That way, once these TNTs are activated, they will not fall right back on another block of TNT. If I demonstrate over here how that would work, it does not look pretty. If you put TNT right above another block and activate it, it can destroy all the things around it. But if you totally break the block underneath it, you give the TNT a long way to fall, which really comes in handy for making sure you do not blow yourself up. Another important thing is that this TNT will land on top of the other TNT, making sure it starts a very crazy chain reaction. Speaking of very crazy though, uh, Milo? What? I have something I think you're gonna wanna take a look at. Well, what is it? The sun has gone down, and these zombies are going to be attacking any minute now. What? There's no time for any more preparation, Milo. We just need to get Steve and Alex inside of our secure Steve and Alex houses before the zombie army attacks. Ah, Alex, come over here. I really built a good house for us. Come on, Steve. Let's make our way into the front of this secure house. It is important we go through the proper way. Otherwise, the zombies will be able to get in any sideways that we break. Let's activate these levers to enter the front door. I'll show you exactly how to get in. Steve, once you are done with this tour, you are never going to have to need to ask any questions again. You'll be so sure of how to get through this secure base. Come on, we're going to go over these chests and above these stairs. I'll need to shut these doors behind us so the zombies cannot follow. Once we go up these stairs, we'll just need to make our way down. I think Steve's totally got this. What about you, Milo? Yeah. That's amazing. I really need to make sure we get Steve inside of this thing before the sun fully sets. It's going down so quickly, and I don't know if me and Steve have time. Oh goodness, I totally forgot to build these iron bars on the left. I hope I didn't forget anything else about this secure base. That could be a disaster that would put me and Steve in serious danger. Okay, come on Steve, we've got to make it through this tripwire hallway. Although, if we get hit by these arrows, they will regenerate us. So we don't need to worry at all. Just make sure we don't step on too many. Okay, Steve is doing a pretty good job of dodging these so far. 
Wow, he really is such a pro. Come on, Steve. Now we need to go up these stairs. Luckily, these turrets will only attack evil mobs, so me and Steve are totally safe. Once we go up these ladders into the dog room, we will be ready to take on this zombie army. Here is where we will stay, Steve. Make sure you gear up, Steve, or pat the dogs too. That works as well. While you do that, I'm going to make sure none of the zombies have already started. Okay, it looks good so far, but oh no, Milo, the zombies are escaping. <laughs> This is bad. They're attacking you and Alex first. I do not want to see you guys die, so I need to run down and grab weapons and armor. Hey, oh no, ow, I fell way too far. Steve, I've taken a lot of damage. That tells me that this battlefield is way too dangerous for you. You are the oldest Minecraft player. We can't afford to lose you and all of your knowledge. That is why I must fight this battle alone. I will take some cakes to honor you though, and some golden apples. Okay, I think I should be pretty well equipped to fight this battle now. Don't worry, Milo, I'm coming. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll come to save you, Milo. I will not let them gang up on you. Look, they are attacking inside your build, but hey, my iron golems are totally here to save the day. Luckily, so am I. Using my regeneration arrows, I can really deal extra damage to these zombies. They do not like regeneration at all, and they also hate the blade. I'm trying to shoot them from up here in my picnic area, and it's not working. Wait a minute, did you just say picnic area, Milo? Well, yeah. Your big idea was to have a picnic? Milo, there's a zombie apocalypse going on. How was that going to help? But Alex really, really wanted a picnic, so I said, yeah, let's have a picnic. Oh, my goodness. Milo, it sounds like you two are two crazy peas in a pod. There are so many zombies here, and more keep coming out of the cave. I think I need to do what my base was designed for. I need to lead all of these zombies inside this decoy base. I'm going to hold them back as far as I can to wait for the other zombies, but oh goodness, they're pushing me back, and I'm taking some serious damage. Maybe I can lose them in some places in this base, but I don't know. There are so many of them, I fear it might not be enough. Okay, I think I just need to wait until more zombies come. Ah, oh, Chip, we got a little problem. What is it, Milo? Well, Downstairs? Oh no, Milo, a bunch of zombies are in your house. Yeah, what am I gonna do? This is bad, Milo. Okay, I think more zombies are going towards you. You need to get out of there, Milo. Do you have a way you can exit your house? Of course. I got a little jumping block back here. Come on, Alex. Oh, goodness, you're really gonna have to get out of there. The zombies are rushing to the jumping block quick, but I keep pushing them into the cobwebs to try and stall them. Ow! Oh no, Milo, why is Alex not following? Doesn't she want to survive? I don't know, but this is really scary! Oh no, I'm going to need to show her that it is safe to go off of that jumping platform. Wish me luck, Milo. I will need to parkour through these cobwebs in order to make it to her in time. You can do it, Jeff! Thanks, Milo. I hope I can, but whoa, there are lots of zombies in here. Oh goodness, I need to dig my way up. Luckily, I made it. All right, Alex, we're going to need to jump! She made Okay, she missed the water, but she still landed safely. Look, Milo, more zombies are on their way. We need to lead Alex through my decoy secure base and into the real one before it is too late. You gotta show us that, Chip. We need to make sure we do this right. Alex is so tired from her big day of being one of the oldest Minecrafters. She is really lagging behind, Milo. We need her to hurry up. Okay, my iron golem is helping take down these zombies, but the zombies are taking him down too. He is really losing a lot of his health, and whoa, that is a big wave of zombies. More keep coming. Come on, Alex, we need to get inside this decoy base and quickly. Come on, Alex, we don't have a lot of time! You need to lead Alex through these doors, Milo, and up through the staircase. While you do that, I will need to distract these zombies and keep them here. Milo, you need to run! <laughs> Okay, while you run and Alex follows you, I need to lead all of these zombies inside here. Hey guys, yeah, come get me. I'm a delicious chip snack and there's totally no TNT about to explode. All right, here goes nothing. Boom, boom. Oh no, the TNT is activating. We better run, you guys. Whoa, that TNT explosion destroyed the first house, and it totally killed a bunch of the zombies. Sadly, there are a bunch more coming. We'll need to use the defenses provided in this next house before it is too late. Oh my gosh, Chip, we're here, and hey, I'm getting shot! 
Careful, that's the trapped regeneration arrow hallway. It is not safe for you to use alone, but whoa, look at those zombies. They are making their way here, even going through the giant crater left by the TNT. Yeah, good idea, Milo. Shoot them down with your arrows. Just make sure you do not hit any of the iron golems. If you do, they might get mad at you and whoa, a zombie managed to get up onto the staircase. How is that possible? This is not good. This base is less secure than I thought. Yeah, well, my base was totally a flop. Yeah, it was bad. Look, the zombies are taking lots of damage from these lasers, but it's not enough. We need to lead them through the regeneration arrow hallway. I'm trying to get through, yeah! Good job, Milo. Come on, Alex. Wow, Alex and Steve are such experts at dodging these arrows. We also need to help out this hallway. It's not enough to take down the zombies on its own. Champ, which way do I go? We need to go through these turrets. Luckily, they will not harm us. These will only harm any zombies that come through. Speaking of, I haven't seen any zombies in a while. I'm getting awfully suspicious that something might be going on, Milo. Yeah, something really might be going on. What if there's a zombie overlord or something? Yeah, that would be terrible. Luckily, I don't see any. Come on, Alex, you need to come up here. Oh, goodness, Alex is not good at this. I need to defend her. No zombie can reach this area, otherwise Alex is toast. Luckily, I don't see any more zombies except, wait a second, there is a big horde of them over there. Wow, this horde is huge. I did not realize there could be this many zombies, Milo. Quickly, Alex, we gotta go up the ladder. Whoa, all of these zombies are absolutely insane. I did not realize there could even be this many. Champ, do you need any help? I don't think I do, but we could in a second. There is a big crater, and I think more zombies are coming out of the crater now. The first decoy house TNT was a total bust. Wait a second, Milo, I see something really bad. What is it? It's a mutant zombie. The crater and the TNT must have totally made them turn into mutants. This is bad, Milo. We need to make sure we do not let the mutant zombies reach Steve and Alex. Otherwise, they won't survive. Don't worry, Chip. I'm here now, and I've got my epic armor on that I borrowed from your place. You borrowed? Okay, I guess you can totally take that armor. Now we need to take down these zombies. Chip! They really are. Oh, goodness. I really hope they don't overrun us. Speaking of overrun, wow, that is a big mutant zombie. I'm going to need to eat a golden apple real quick. Yeah, I needed to eat a bunch of them. Oh, wow. Milo the mutant zombie is making his way through. We need to find a way through all of these crazy zombie waves before it's too late to even walk. I'm really freaking out and wow, that guy just launched me. Oh, no, Milo, this is bad. You need to find a way to come back around here. I don't know if I can help you. You'll have to find a way to do it yourself. Chip, I'm going to lead them over to the Iron Golem. Maybe he can help us. No, Milo, the Iron Golem won't be able to take them out on his own. We need to get these zombies to the turret section and fast. All right, let's leave them there. I've managed to hold off a lot of them, but wow, that is a big wave. I really think we need to be careful about this, Milo. Yeah. Come on, Milo, we need to go through this hallway. Oh no, the TNT is activating. Whoa, it is way more powerful than I thought. We gotta make sure Steve and Alex are okay. Chip, why is there so much TNT? Oh no, it did not stop the zombies. This is bad. I need to use the final weapon that I did not think I would have to use. Whoa, Chip, you better be quick about it. I did not want to show this to Steve because he hates netherite. He will only use diamond swords, but I actually have a sharpness 5 netherite sword that I sneakily made to take down any mutant zombies we might have seen. Quickly, you gotta use it! Oh yeah, I totally do. Before he uses his slam attack to take me down, I also will need to use my enchanted golden apples. Stay back, Milo. You won't be able to take it on with a regular diamond sword. I'll need to use my sharpness one to take this zombie to the grave. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's also taking down my wolves. This is bad. Stay back, zombie. You will not hurt these wolves under my watch. No way. Instead, the only thing getting hurt will be you. Chip, if we go down, then who's going to protect Alex and Steve? Nobody, but that's okay, Milo, because we didn't go down. We defeated that zombie, and now we just need to make sure that Alex and Steve survived the initial zombie attack. Yeah. Me too. I don't know if I have many building blocks. We'll have to be very careful with how we bridge over, Milo. Okay, come on, Milo. We've got to get up here and fast. But look, I've got some dirt blocks just to save the day. Oh, wow. That is really handy. Okay, we've reached the ladders. And look, Steve is here, but where's Alex? Oh, no. Where is she? 
Wait a second, Milo! Alex is right down here. Let's place blocks so she can totally climb back up. Wow, we really saved Alex and Steve from the zombie attack! We did it! We saved the day! The Minecraft OGs will love us forever! Yeah, you're welcome, Steve and Alex! Woohoo!